of you. Like hells we will! We know who you've got in there! We're not leaving till you hand her over! Bring her out! Bring her out! What's going on? Someone let slip about Fedola. It's true then! The bitch really is in there! I knew it! I bloody knew it! We demand vengeance! Bring her out! Today we butcher the butcher! But the... Come on, you don't mean that! We'd be no better than the Imperials if you'd all just calm down! Calm down! That monster and her thrice damned skulls dragged my man from our home and beat him to death in the street! Aye, and my dad! That bitch has spilt enough blood to fill a lock! We all know her crimes. She's a traitor and a murderer. How many of your resistance friends have died at her hands, eh? And here you are, protecting her! So that's what all the fuss is about. Hearken to me! Brothers and sisters of Alamigo. Hey, who's this? That... That's the bull of Alamigo. My friends, you are not alone in your anger, your grief, your despair. For it is mine as well. That gnawing pain in your breast, it is enough to bring an old bull to his knees. But I ask you, brothers and sisters, to think not only of the family and friends who were cut down before your very eyes, but to think also of the ones who were abducted, the ones who may yet live. Where were they taken? What became of them? These questions demand answers. I share your thirst for justice, for vengeance, but we will gain only fleeting satisfaction if we give in to our base appetite. We will never know the truth. Now is the time that we, the people of Alamigo, must decide what manner of nation we will build for ourselves and for generations yet unborn. When they look to our example, will they see a people who held fast to their principles? or one who cast them aside when tried. I say to you, it is our responsibility to give these prisoners a fair trial that they might answer to all of Alamigo. The Galleons called us savages, and I'll be damned if we prove them right. I know you're right, I do, but I can't.
so many visitors. Come to have a good laugh, have you? Or do you mean to put me out of my misery? To finish what you started? It's about bloody time. That's not why we're here, no. Do you remember what I said? How I promised you you'd live long enough to see us win our freedom? Well, I meant it. And not to mock you, either. You're wasting your time. All of this is pointless! There's no reason to keep me alive, and you know it! I killed your men. I killed my men. And you know what my only regret is? That I didn't kill you when I had the chance! That's a lie, and you know it. You think we can't tell what you're trying to do? That we're blind? Now, you're a fool, but you're not stupid. You're ruthless. Relentless. You'd give up anything and everything to get what you want. You didn't come this far, climbing over the bodies of your own brothers and sisters just to piss it all away! I see you, Fedora. I see you for what you are. Fadola, we mustn't be late. The Imperial Viceroy will be attending today's banquet. All right! Father, what's Lord Gaius like? Is he nice? Are you friends? There you go again with all your questions. Lord Gaius is a great and honourable man who looks after all of Alamigo. He's very busy, and if we don't hurry, we'll miss our chance to see him. Filthy tinhead lovers. The little tin head lover doesn't know what she is, eh? A traitor, sweetheart. A backstabbing bitch who gladly betray her kith and kin to gnaw on what few scraps the Imperials deign to toss her. Like your bastard father and whore mother. That's not true! My parents are good people! They've never done anything like that! Oh, but they were quick to help themselves and their bitch spawn, weren't they? You're just as guilty as them! Fadola! Traitors! Please! You have to do something! My husband and daughter are in danger! Soldiers of the Imperial Army are under no obligation to intervene in the disputes of arms. We're citizens! We have rights! Ah! Oh, 
Good. It's all right. It's all right. They don't understand, but they'll see in time. They'll see that this is the only way to survive. Traitors! Traitors! Let the savages have their fun. They'll be more compliant once they've tied themselves out. Adela, please! You already have citizenship! Why would you want to become a soldier? Oh, gods! What have you done to your face? Forgotten it already, have you? I'm honouring Father's memory. by telling the world that you know better than a common savage. Am I though, Mother? Are any of us? Can't you see? Citizenship means nothing to them. If you're not a pure-blood Galleon, you're no different from any other savage. So I'll play the part. I'll join the Legion and I'll make them respect me. And when the mob see that, they'll think twice before throwing their stones. Ansfrid, Rudolf, Emlyn. It's time. It'll be hard. Humiliating. They'll try to break us. Send us crawling back to our own kind. But no matter what, we'll bleed for them, die for them if we have to. We'll do whatever it takes to be free! So, you mean to play the part one last time, eh? The unrepentant traitor whose death will serve to unite the people? Shut up. You had every chance to kill yourself. Fashion a noose from your clothes. Wait for the guards to leave you alone long enough to slip it over your neck. I said shut up! But then it would have all been for nothing, wouldn't it? Whatever it takes. That's what you said. Been in my head, have you? Had a little peek at my past. And what? A few stolen memories tell you everything you need to know, do they? Don't you dare patronize me! You don't know a goddamned thing about the life I've led! The bastards that killed him. The bastards that let it happen. My father deserved better! I swore I'd do whatever it took to make them pay!
You! All that power! All that pain! It's too much! Too much for anyone! The things... They've done to you! The lies! The betrayal! The endless fighting! Yet there you stand. Unbroken. How? Why? Damn you. Damn you all. You still have time, Fordola. Think about how you want to spend it. Let's go. Thank you for answering my summons in these most interesting times. You have been busy. The liberation of Alamigo will have far-reaching consequences, and there is a matter upon which I would seek your counsel. I speak of Rauban and his future. know the tale of his rise from penniless refugee to member of the Syndicate and General of the Immortal Flames. Yet though he has come to call Uldar home, it will never be his homeland. He is a son of Alamigo. And now that she is free, I thought it only a matter of time before he sought my leave to return to her. Indeed, I had resigned myself to his loss. Suffice it to say, I was greatly surprised to hear him speak so lightly of handing over the reins in Alamigo and retaking his place at my side. I will welcome him with open arms, of course. He is my most trusted advisor and my dearest friend. But I have known the man a long time, and beneath that steely gaze, I spied a flicker of doubt. Whether Rauban chooses to remain in Uldar or return to Alamigo, I only wish that he do so with a heart unburdened by guilt or regret. Yet, how can he freely make such a choice, knowing how much I depend on him? It is past time that I learned to discharge my duties as a Sultana alone. I must go forth and see my realm with my own eyes, and hear the wind with my own ears. Might I have your company for a brief adventure? Wonderful! Allow me a moment to change into something a touch less conspicuous, and I will join you outside.
please! Come back! I beg of you! It seems you're the one who needs looking after, Master Shelf. <laughs> Grab on! Your Grace. I have kept the promise made. So you have. And in turn, so too shall I keep mine. With your winnings, you have become one of the six most wealthy souls in all Ulda. And so, as tradition dictates, Rauben Aldin, you have earned yourself a seat on the Syndicate. May your new station garner you still greater glories. I am honored, Your Grace, and vow to serve with every fiber of my being from this day till my last. Long live the Sultana, and long live Ulda! A personal summons from the Scions. This must be important business indeed. Though, if it concerns anything so underhand as an assassination, I fear I can be of little help. <laughs> you have made your point. It is indeed unsettling to find oneself seated across from an impassive mask. There, would this better please your grace? Or should I address you as Lady Lillera? Hmm? Nay, the deception has served its purpose. I am glad to see you found amusement in my little jest, Lord Lollarito. But shall we proceed to the business at hand? By all means. I must say, I am most eager to hear your proposal. Simply put, I would aid the refugees camped in Thanalan in their efforts to return to Alamigo. The reparations you paid in the wake of your earlier misdemeanors will be used to fund the endeavor, together with the fortune seized from the late Teleji Adeleji's estate. But this plan is not intended to benefit the displaced alone. I would make of this an investment which shall enrich Uldar and Alamigo both. And who better to consult on matters of profit than the wealthiest man in all of Thanalan? I beseech you then, Lord Lollarito, share with us your mercantile wisdom. Ah, <laughs> twould seem your grace has matured beyond acts of earnest yet misplaced charity. Pray tell me more. To summarize, in return for facilitating the repatriation of refugees and assisting in the establishment of new industry in Alamigo, you ask that a proportion of all subsequent profits be promised to Uldar. Ha! Huh, I am impressed, Your Grace. It is an elegant solution. Albeit one lacking certain crucial details, specifically which industry and where. How swiftly you identified the weakness in my plan, just as I knew you would. Your travels have taken you across the length and breadth of Gear Abania, and you know the land far better than I. 
Which of the settlements you visited would best provide a home for our refugees? Which has the greatest potential to flourish, given the appropriate investment? Yes, a quarry town certainly does carry the potential for profit. At least it would do were it situated anywhere near a lucrative market. It would cost more to transport the materials than they are worth, in my humble opinion. Yes, if a stable trade route can be established between Uldar and Alamigo, then Alagiri would once more become an important waypoint. But while such growth would greatly benefit its current residents, I'm afraid it could sustain little beyond that. Yes, that desolate little village on the shore of Loch Seld. I know the salt tree and its products well. The Imperial invasion brought an end to their more widespread distribution. Much to the dismay of many a wealthy gourmand, myself included. Salt has ever been a transformative ingredient. And in this instance, I dare say, it could transform a modicum of effort into a mountain of gill. The local citizens will need to be consulted, of course. But I trust the East Aldenar Trading Company can be relied upon to provide its assistance in negotiating a mutually beneficial arrangement. Naturally, Your Grace. I shall dispatch representatives well-versed in the extraction of this white gold and wring every last ons of profit from its production. The Loch's bounty will contribute to Alamigo's enrichment whilst easing the burden on the bull's aching shoulders. Just as Your Grace desired. A deal is struck then. Apologies for the wait. People are screaming for the Butcher's blood again. No sooner have we broken up one mob than another forms. Thankfully, all have been amenable to reason, thus far. But it is no concern of yours. We must speak of the men Arenvald and his comrades apprehended in the peaks. By their uniforms, the captives were first judged to be Imperial troops. But after further investigation, their true identities came to light. I dare say you remember Yu Yuhasi and Laurentius, the fugitives who conspired with Captain Ilbert in the Crystal Braves' betrayal. Aye, well, it would seem they followed him all the way to the Wall. It was they who orchestrated the slaughter of the Resistance fighters prior to the Griffin's infernal ritual. Were it in your hands, how would you punish these men? Hear, hear. There is no more fitting sentence for the perpetrators of such a massacre, and that is but one of their crimes. In any event, I thank you for your honesty. When the time comes for the Alliance to pass judgment, I'll see that your opinion is heard. 
Well, that concludes our business here. But there is more I would say. Walk with me. I bear a share of the blame for Ilbert's atrocities. Had I openly supported the cause of Alamegan liberation, he might not have felt driven to do what he did. Things could have been different, and I'm sorry they aren't. But even after all that has happened, my homeland is free. With the Scions and the Alliance at their side, my countrymen have reclaimed what many thought lost forever. Under her new leadership, I have every confidence that Alamigo will emerge from the shadow of the Empire and rise once more to greatness. Which means my work here is done. Soon I will return to Uldar and take my place at the Sultana's side. Father... <laughs> I'll not deny there's a part of me that wants to stay. The same part that contemplated renouncing my rank and joining you as a wandering sellsword. But I pledged my blade to Nanamo, and I will not betray that oath. Is this truly what you want, Father? It is. Ever has my sword been hers to command, and ever shall it remain. Thank you for lending an ear. When all the rest are clamoring for me to stay, I trust you'll send me on my way. Thank you all for coming. I am Lise Hext, and I speak for the Resistance. Among you are village elders, refugee leaders, envoys from the Ananta and the Kikern. You've come from every corner of Girabania to help decide the future of Alamigo. But before that, I want to ask you a question. What was the first thing you noticed when you came in? For me, it was that empty throne. It has no one to sit on it now. No viceroy, no king. Would any of you like to take their place? Or should someone else sit there? Then let's sit here, in a circle. As equals. And I hope, as friends. Expertly done! Lise has removed monarchy as a choice early in the game, and positioned them to consider a joint government. 
All things considered, I would say events have got off to a fine start. And that is Alagana's stance on the matter. Thank you, Regenfred. Another vote in favor. Next, let's hear from Shanti of the Kaliana. Tell us, how do your people feel about the idea of a republic? Yananta, wish only that those who dwell within Gia Abania devote themselves to our faith. You shall all worship Sri Lakshmi! Lady of Bliss! Grace us once more with your beauteous visage! We're allowed through the door. We can worry about the how of it later. We need to evacuate these people right now, or the primal will make thralls of them all. It's up to us. Sorely disappointed. We have the Warrior of Light and Arenvold to shield us. Aye, but they can't well defend your guests and attack the Primal, can they? We're stuck on the back foot. Uh, all right, I think I have an idea. Keep these people safe, General. I'll be back as soon as I can.
free you from your hate! Time before we miss one. <gasps> what of it? Do you want to kill this thing or not? Your souls weigh heavy.
did it! We beat her! What is this? I'm only gonna say this once. The Ananta just summoned their primal in the throne room. My friends are fighting her, but they need help. They need someone with the Echo, and by the gods, I wish I had it, but I don't. I told you before that you still had time, but things have changed. I need your answer now. You can end it like Xenos, or you can fight for Alamigo. Your choice. Seven hells. It's her. The butcher. It's done. Take me back to my cell. You are not forgiven. Not you. You, I will never forgive. But I will thank you. For standing against a primal and saving us from servitude. You have my thanks.
a fine spot to contemplate the heavens. The meeting is over. The envoys have chosen to instate a government model on Ishgard's House of Commons, a ruling body of representatives elected by the people. It is a fair decision, and one which signals the end of my part in all this. But I would gaze upon Girabania's stars one last time before I leave. Forget something. Your Grace, I... there was no word. Rabon Aldin, you are hereby dismissed as General of the Immortal Flames and relieved of your seat on the Syndicate. But... Your Grace... Rabon, I am no longer a child. Stay here in your homeland. Work with your brethren. Rebuild Alamigo. You desire to stand alone. I, I understand, but remember what happened. I remember full well the consequences of my naivety. And thus did I consult at length with the most trusted advisor ere I embarked upon this course. A most trusted advisor? And what of me? Am I no longer deserving of your confidence? What trust can there be between us when you withhold the truth from me? Did you think me oblivious to the anguish in your eyes when you spoke of returning to Uldar? For years and years, we have trusted one another, yet now you refuse to confess your heart's desire? I swore an oath to you that day on the sands. I pledged my sword. And it has served me well. But in Pippin you have forged a new sword, as sharp and deadly as the blade you bequeathed him. I will show you a Sultana who can wield every weapon at her disposal, including Lollarito and his monetarist cronies. So follow your heart, please. You are home. You are free. None no more. I... Smile for me, Raubon. I would have this parting be a joyous one. Thank you, Your Grace. It has been an honor to serve you and Ulda. Tomorrow you will serve Alamigo and fight for the good of all Eorzea.
Am I understood? Yes, Your Grace. Thanks for shielding us from Lakshmi, you two. If you hadn't been there, the rest of us would be worshipping her by now. You're kind to include me, Lise. But we both know who did most of the work. I could scarce keep track of the battle, let alone land at Elimblow. No shame in admitting it. The Warrior of Light has put far better men than me in the shade. Did I mention that I encountered the Sultana in the palace? It would seem her grace has come to Girabania to oversee the final stages of her relocation project. She was in search of General Aldin, and I directed her to the rooftop garden. I do hope he was still there. Are you in the habit of gossiping about the affairs of royalty, Master Leveilleur? Certainly not, Your Grace. I, I was merely informing my companions. Be at ease, Alpha No, it was only a jest. But I must yield the floor to Raubon. He has an important announcement to make. <clears throat> As of yesternight, I have been relieved of my post in the Immortal Flames and the Syndicate both. I shall be assuming my father's duties. And may I say that Tizona has never felt heavier upon my back. Toward seem, I am in need of employment. Mayhap one of my old acquaintances can introduce me to a mercenary company or some such. You may be getting on in years, Father, but you'd struggle to find a band of sellswords who wouldn't snap your hand off. Your remaining hand. <laughs> yes, the Bull of Alamigo need not be put out to pasture just yet. <laughs> your Grace has developed a wicked edge to her humor. And you, Pippin, would do well not to laugh when the future may hold the same for you. So, does this mean you're staying? Aye. That seems to be the way of it. I would be glad to aid you in rebuilding our nation, if you'll have me. He says, Welcome home, Raoban. Well, that was unexpected, though you seem distinctly unsurprised. Either you are more astute than I give you credit for, or I am losing my touch. In any event, one thing is certain. Alamigo will rejoice at the homecoming of her dearest son. <laughs> <laughs>